Hi again. So in this video, I would like to look at a kind of classic problem that comes up uh, in programming graphics when you're first getting started that requires a conditional statement. You really need an if statement for this problem. And the problem is this. So here I have a little bit of, of an example here. We can see there's one variable, x equals 0. There's a canvas. I'm drawing that, a circle at that x. And x, every time through draw, is increasing, incrementing by 3. What will the result of that be? This circle that moves across the screen and it leaves, and it never comes back. So the problem that we need to look at here in this particular video is how do we get that circle to turn around and come back? OK, so I'm going to come over here for a second. And the topic, if you just watched the previous video, we are looking at conditional statements. Conditional statements, an if statement, has this format. If, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, and some sort of Boolean expression true or false goes in here. So let's think about what is the condition that has to be met in order for that circle, the ball, so to speak, to turn around. So this is the canvas. Here is the circle. It's moving along. If the location of this circle is at the edge, that's the condition. So that's the condition for which it should turn around. So you might think, what's the name of the variable? x. So if x is equal to width, you might think that this is where you want to get started. And, and this is not completely illegitimate. I mean, this could work, and it's sort of the right idea. If the circle's location equals the width of the window, that's when you want to turn, turn around. I don't know why I feel like I want to start this one over again. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm not starting over. <laughs> OK, um, so, but this, this isn't really good. Think about it. First of all, I, in, in, in the program that I just showed you, x uh, is going up by 3 each time. x equals x plus 3. Goes up by 3, goes up by 3, goes up by 3. So if the width of the window is like 200, it might not ever actually, x might not ever actually equal 200. It might be at like, you know, 197. Well, that would be at 200. But you know, whatever is divisible by 3 up there near 200. So this isn't really good. We need a condition that will, no matter what, catch that circle before, before it goes too far off the screen. And if you can think about that, a nice condition for that might be if x is greater than. You could use greater than or equals, but I'm just going to use greater than. If x is greater than with, what? Do something. So first, let's just make sure this is the right idea. So let's come back over here. And now we can add, hi, back over here. We can add this to this particular program. And I'm standing in front of it too much. Let me scooch this over, scooch this over. That's a little bit better. So I'm going to add if x is greater than width. And remember, width, width is a built-in variable in P5 that knows inherently the width of the canvas. And where does it get that value? It gets it from here. It's used, I could have put 600. I could put 600. I don't know where I'm looking. I could have put 600 down there, but uh, if I ever change the canvas size, it's you know then I don't have to change the, the number elsewhere in the program. So using these built-in variables is a useful thing. So I'm gonna you know you may not have seen this, but I'm gonna add a print statement. So something you can always do in P5 is say print ln, which means print line. I'm gonna print a line down here in the console that's going to say off the screen. So we should only see that message print if x is greater than width. So let's run this. And we can see I don't see the message. I don't see the message. I don't see the message. I see the message. So you can see our if statement works. It only triggered printing that as soon as it left the screen. So now you have to ask yourself, what, what's, the, what's the thing we put there? What, what do you put there in order to have it to go backwards? OK. So. Uh, here's, what, here's what you might be thinking. <laughs> it's not right, but here's what you might be thinking. If going forwards is x equals x plus 3, then going backwards is maybe x equals x minus 3. right? So if x is greater than width, then go backwards. OK, technical mishap, but the camera is working again. Now, where were we? We were looking at this particular scenario. We need to get that circle to turn around. We know it's moving to the right because it's increasing by 3 every time through draw. So when it gets to the edge, it should decrease by 3. x equals x minus 3. Now, this is flawed logic, but it sort of has this almost intuitive idea that it might be right. And we need to figure out why is it wrong and what's the correct way to do it, which will hopefully help you understand about how conditional statements work even more. So let me run it, and let's see what the problem is. So it's moving to the edge. Now 
that if statement is true and it moves back by three. But what does it do the next line? It moves up by three again. Then it comes around this draw again. Is it over the edge? Yeah, move back by three and then move up by three. So this didn't really solve our problem. I just moved it back once and then this line of code is still executing. What we need to do is figure out a way to permanently have the, the, the circle stop increasing by three, permanently stop increase, this decrease by three. We need the third number three to turn into a negative three for the next many cycles through draw. And how do we do that? Uh, how do you need to do that? Uh, the way to do that is with a variable. So let's look at this again. Let's say I say if I have a variable speed equals three, and then I say x equals x plus speed, and I'm gonna take this out, so x is always changing by whatever the value of that variable speed is. And when the program starts, that speed variable is 3. It's 3, it's 3, it's 3, it's 3. Oh, what do we want it to be? We want it to turn around. What if we made that speed variable negative 3 now? x equals x plus negative 3 is the equivalent of x equals x minus 3. So all I need to do here is say speed equals negative 3. So at a certain moment, speed equals negative 3. And when we get to the edge, B equals M, ah, and it's moving around, and now it's coming back, and goodbye. <laughs> so for you, with this exercise, you might think about, OK, what if it's also moving up and down? How do you deal with the top and bottom edges? How do you deal just with the right and left edge? How might you have it change color or change size? How could you have other things about the circle change every time it hits? Uh, boundary. Maybe its speed even changes, so each time it hits it starts going faster and faster. There are lots of little variations on this that you could try that I might recommend uh, doing to kind of keep playing with this idea of a conditional statement. And in the next video what I want to look at is <laughs> something that is kind of uh, missing here is what if I want to say if it's greater than with um, do this, otherwise do something else. So this idea of an else or an else if is something we need to look at. We can also join Boolean logic with an and and an or. You know. If I'm feeling nervous and scared, then, I don't know, don't make videos about programming. So, um, uh, or if I'm feel, uh, anyway, you get, you get the idea, and and or. So those are the things I need to look at in the next video, uh, which I will do. So I'm going to hit stop here, and um, um, you're going to not be watching it anymore. Okay.